Hey guys, welcome back to Death Mark. So apparently this is the DLC for the game. Um, it just came with my version, so I had no idea this game even had DLC. So, we have no partners. So I guess, uh, I've already finished the investigation today. Alright, let's go to the next day. That's right. I have to investigate again tomorrow. Once I'm done looking things up, I should go to bed early. Hmm? I hear the rumble of something heavy moving around as I'm half asleep. Is someone there? Please don't be that damn doll. My brain is too sluggish for thoughts. I couldn't say how long I slept. I remember it being dawn, but... Hmm? A loud noise makes me spring upright. Young eyes are staring at me. I'm sorry. I woke you up. Suzu? What are you doing here? The room was a mess, so I thought I'd clean it up for you. Sorry. Sorry I didn't ask for permission first. That's not exactly what I meant. Oh, are you awake? Oh, sorry, voice. Jeez, are you a little too careless? Christy, you're here too? She shrugs and sighs dramatically, very nearly rolling her eyes at me. You left the front door unlocked. Were you out investigating until late? Until late. It's not good to sleep on the sofa. I guess I didn't have the energy to make it up to my bedroom last night. Was I that tired? Yeah, something like that. Take better care of yourself. Oh, do you want some coffee? No, I'm fine for now. More importantly, why are you here? Christy glances over at me and huffs. I'm dropping off reports from Mr. Detective. Mr. Detective? That must be the research for Mishita's case. But who'd have thought Christy would listen to a request from Mishita? That man is the worst. The attitude he had when asking for a favor. If I didn't owe you, I'd have flat out told him no. Guess she didn't agree. Be guess she didn't agree because she wanted to. I understand, but why is Suzu here too? I told her about my visit and invited her. We exchanged numbers a while back. Yes, she certainly surprised me, suddenly asking to be friends. It's the first time I've been friends with an adult. Crispy, Christy whispers to me. I mean, I can't help but be worried. I have to make sure that creepy otaku isn't doing anything weird to her. They go after children sometimes. So that's why. She was worried because Ida is so forward. No, more likely because Suzu is too innocent. But I'm, a, but I'm a little relieved. You didn't seem very well when I was here before, so I've been worried. I'm much better now. Thank you. Yes, it seems you're fine now. I wish Ida could have come with us, but he's working at the factory today. It sounds like Ida started working seriously. It's never too late to start something. I hope he tries hard. So, moving on to the matter at hand. You... you heard how the owner of the hotel went missing, right? I have connections with the copy editor of that article, so I asked her. And sure enough, her expression clouds over. The hotel and rumors of its illegal services were juicy news for the media. They even knew that there was a, media a mediator organization managing it. The reporters looking into the flow of cash actually got some concrete proof. This telling, telling of the story is fascinating because Christy used to be in the media herself. The things recorded in the guest book we found may have been connected, 
But before we can talk more about it... Suzu, sorry, but would you mind doing some cl some more cleaning? I've been putting it off for a long time, so the second floor is a giant mess, too. Okay, I can do that. I'll borrow your cleaning supplies, then. Suzu skips up the stairs. Christy seems to immediately catch on. Not exactly a topic for kids' ease, huh? Sorry, I didn't realize. No, it really is a mess up there. Anyway, tell me more. Yeah, so the media at the time should have been pursuing the heart of the matter, but... It's like this case was hardly reported on. The media caught wind of the story, so the police should have been briefed on it as well. And yet, what took place is ma what took place is masquer what took place in masquerade is shrouded in darkness. It seems something behind something's behind all of this. Behind? How do you mean? I don't know if this is true or not, but they had a whole list of all masquerade's customers. Famous politicians and businessmen were on it. And that reporter who got the proof up and went missing. A number of freelancers on the case also went missing, apparently. That's horrible. Those are the only words I can find. Or, sorry, wrong voice. Those are the only words I can. I. Those are the only words I can find to describe it. You're telling me. Sometimes you get stuck in an accent. It's an outrage to silence those who seek the truth. It's bad, but it'd at least be a little better if... It was the work of irregular humans. Work of regular humans? What do you mean by that? Exactly what it sounds like, the truth is. I tell Christy about what happened yesterday. What we found in the hotel, and what happened to Hiro. The color drains from Christy's face until she's as white as a sheet. Suzu, we're leaving. With her sudden yell, Christy stands up and prepares to leave. What? What's wrong? No one told me. What? No one said a single thing about spirits like that being involved. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I'm never going to face the spirit again. And I'm not just thinking about me. I don't want Suzu going through that either. I don't blame her. Thinking about it, it makes sense. No one has the right to drag Christy and Suzu into a case like this, especially me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get you involved. The research you've done is enough, so don't concern yourself about it anymore. Christy looks at me in stunned surprise. No, I should be the one apologizing. I owe you. You did everything you could to save us, but we... Is something the matter? Suzu re-enters the room, head tilted in confusion. Ah, just remembered something I have to do, so we need to leave. Sorry. You can keep cleaning next time, okay? Oh, okay, I understand. Suzu nods, though she looks suspicious. She's very perceptive. She has to have picked up the strained air between us. Well then, see you, Mr. Anon. Right, thanks for coming all this way. You are a great help. I'm very grateful. Christy quickly bows to me, her expression inscrutable. Excuse us. I'll come again sometime, okay? Suzu puts her hands together and bows politely. Then she whispers in my ear so Christy won't overhear. I'm so sorry, I caught a little bit of what you were talking about earlier. So I contacted Ida. I'm sure he'll be helpful. Uh oh. To be honest, I can't imagine Ida being very useful. But Suzu is, has good intentions, so I nod. Thanks for the- thanks, that helps. I do my best to smile as I see them out of the mansion. I need to get ready soon and head out. New info added to the spirit file. Christie's information. So, what I'm going to do is save. Don't worry, we're not ending the episode. I'm not evil. Not that evil, anyway. 
Let's head back to the masquerade. I didn't think it would go for two days straight, but it's sprinkling again tonight. Gotta set the mood for the investigation, huh? Mother Nature is just taunting me. As the time comes to get the search started, two figures finally appear. Hey, right on time. Did you get any sleep? Damo looks exhausted, probably as a result of everything that happened last night. Hello! I, I fucking love this character. Banshee! I honestly never expected Banshee Ito to come out. But he definitely has some spiritual powers. Yosuka's judgment is on point. But more importantly... How is Hiro doing? She's stable. She's showing no, no adverse symptoms. But she hasn't regained consciousness, and she's exhausted a lot of energy. Even being optimistic, it isn't good. At this rate, her life could be in danger. Is that so? I was prepared for bad news, but the situation sounds exceedingly dire, laid out like that. The problem is we don't know what the cause is. We suspect poison, but without knowing what kind, there's nothing we can do. What's worse is we can't find a, a puncture wound for the injection points. You can't give her serum? Isn't that normally what you give patients with when there's poison? Damon looks exasperated, or rather frustrated as he shakes his head. So just try random antitoxins? Sure, if you want to kill her, go ahead. Even if we could get our hands on the poison, it'd take time to create a serum. We'd be too late. So there's nothing we can do. If we just had something, a kind of clue. I look at the hotel bath in a sea of neon. There isn't much hope, but we cannot despair either. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, well, that's right, just so you know. Damon looks over to me. There's no mark on Hiro's body. I see. Which means that the nightmare isn't starting again. I sigh in relief, the frozen chunk of fear in my chest melting away. I did some investigation on that myself, actually. I went to the warehouse last night. And what did you find? Nothing had changed. That Paluan... Paluania? Paluania? Box was still sealed. Forgive me if I said that word wrong. Is that right? Phew. Well, that's good. That's the first good news I've heard in a while. Come on, you two. How long are you gonna stand there chit-chatting? Let's get going already! Alright, sorry for making you wait. This is everyone for today, right? I hesitate for a second as Ito comes to mind, but... This is all of us. Let's get started. Good! Time to get a move on! He's so energetic that it's more worrying than reassuring. Why is Banshee this fired up? Just an FYI, old man. This place may be abandoned, but stealing is a crime. An ex-detective gave us the request. If you do something illegal... How dare you? I don't go around stealing things. I'm helping out at... I'm helping with out of the goodness of my heart. Anyway, who cares about that? Let's get to searching. Sounds like Damon hit the bullseye. Banshee rushes ahead into the hotel, as if trying to get away. As troublesome as ever. Well, he's at least reliable at times like these. By the way, Anon, may I ask you to do something for me? No need to be so formal about it. If something were to happen to me, please move Hiro into another hospital at once. I've spoken to another doctor I know. Okay. And if I start a acting strangely, I'll leave myself in your hands, Damon. Yes, of course. And what will we do if we're both done in? Good question. Oh, Banshee saves her, but guess it'll be all up to the grumpy detective. Right. Let's have him take care of it. 
Come on, we can't let the guy wander alone. Alright, so with that, we move on in. No. I want to go inside. What's going on? There we go. Button acted wonky. Whoa, it's Whoa, it's all fancy in here. Banshee's cheerful voice hits us as soon as we step inside. Hmm, maybe I could make this my second home. Oh, what's this what's this glass case about? Talking to himself, he starts rummaging around. I already I already warned you once, old man, we're not here to play. I don't think Banshee's listening. As Banshee putters around by himself, it reminds me of what happened to Hiro yesterday. We should stick together as much as possible. It's dangerous to go alone, and we don't have a sword to take with us. Yeah, you're right. Hey, old man, are you listening? I have ears. He hears us all right, but clearly won't listen. Good grief. So, so Anon, you searched up to the third floor yesterday? Which means we should look through the fourth and above today. Yeah, that's right, but... Is there a problem with that plan? When we went up to the fourth floor, we just ended up back on the third floor again. I tell them about the mysterious phenomenon we encountered yesterday. Are you sure you aren't just confused? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was real. Then we're in trouble. Is there no other way to get to the fourth floor? What are you talking about? There's a way right over here, easy. Banshee unexpectedly butts in. What do you mean? That thing right there, see? Do you bumpkins not know what an elevator is? Damon lets out an irritated groan. Oh, I swear. Old man, you know elevators need electricity, don't you? Do you think this hotel has any power? If there isn't any, then all you have, and all you have to do is make it so that there is. There's a device that controls electricity. I should know. I'm an expert. Oh, really? Is that so? Damon sighs. I think he's lost the will to argue. Guess I'll just have to find the device thing myself then. He heads off. And after I told him not to wander away from the others. I just asked you not to go off by yourself. Banshee, I'm begging you, st- I don't get to finish my sentence. A splitting pain pierces my head and I fall to my knees. And on, what's wrong? My head. Ow. Ugh, ugh, suddenly. Do you get chronic migraines? Do you have any medicine on you? No, I I don't think that's it. Oh, my head is just throbbing. A pulsing headache? If you don't have any medicine, then icing is it is best. I'll go buy something from the vending machine. Stay here until I come back. Don't try to stand. You could fall over. I sink to the floor, unable to even reply. Before long, Damon returns with a cold bottle of water, but... Strangely enough, my headache has completely vanished while he was gone. It's hard to believe that a pain that intense would disappear so easily, but it did. Damon doesn't seem particularly surprised when I tell him. No, it's not that odd. After all, we haven't clarified what caused the headache in the first place. I'm sure it's just exhaustion. You didn't sleep much yesterday, did you? That's true. Can't exactly say I got much rest. Man, you're under continuous stress. It's possible to get sudden headaches. Once you get home, you should take a bath or something and relax. Okay, I'll try that. All of that common sense, but it carries weight coming from a doctor. Ugh. Ugh, by the way. Damon looks around puzzled. Where's old man Banshee? Huh? I whip my head around, searching. 
But Banshee is nowhere to be found. Jeez, already? Mm, I give up. Oh, we'll find him soon. I hope he's okay. Yeah, right after what happened yet. Yes, right after what happened yesterday. But there's nothing we can do. Well, let's get let. Well, let him do what he wants. As long as it's proper investigation, the detective should have no complaints. Yeah, let's go. I didn't actually mean to click that, but I did. Open the door to the emergency staircase. Let's go up. So there is no basement, it seems like, in this place. That's weird. Mm hmm. Let's try this one. I opened the door to the guest room and walked inside. Is there anything new? Spring seems... Okay, so there's nothing new there. But all I find is an empty cardboard box. I didn't mean to click that again. So it looks like there's nothing new here. I keep doing that! Okay, so let's back it out. There's nothing new in there. I don't know if anything has changed. I open the door to the guest room and walk inside. Hmm. I try pulling on it, but it doesn't budge. I'll have to lift up the end a little and one out. Let's see. What do you think? Can you lift this? Well, I can at least hold it up. I'll just have to give it a try. Make sure you don't hurt your back. One, two, three. We both lift the bed together. I managed to drag the object out with my foot. I've got it. We can put it down now. Phew! I worked up a sweat. So, what did you find? Or, sir, what did you find? Got a con contraceptive. No, I've got the same reaction. Strange it hasn't been found until now. Well, at least it hasn't been used. Doesn't look like there's anything else we can really do in here. Huh, I wonder if we can actually get it open now. I try pulling on the elevator door. It moves slightly if I pull my weight on it. It's impossible to open alone, but if I had some help, I might be able to force it open. Wanna give it a try? Lend me a hand? Alright, I'll show you what I'm capable of for now. I'm capable of now that I've gotten healthier. On my count, one, two, three! We muster up all of our strength and try two or three times to force the doors open. Then... What? There's the sound of something snapping and the door suddenly slides open. Did we break it? Uh, maybe. It's Probably still okay. But now we can search inside the elevator. Let's go on in. Go into the elevator. This seems smart and safe. Manually opening the door with my hands and stepping in, in feels really weird. Damon cons... cons... Clo Damon closes the door and I've just gone retarded. Once he comes inside. Doesn't leaving an elevator door open concern you? Uh, true. I think it was just a habit that I didn't think about. Still, are those spider webs on the ceiling? Yeah, looks like it. An enclosed area such as this would be a good place to spin a web. Now then, where should we check first? So we can kind of check around. Let's look. 
It lists the numbers of rooms from the first floor to the sixth. Hmm, so the VIP room is the sixth floor. It's the only one uh, with a different color. Or it's the only one with a different color. Okay, so it's the same. Touching it coats my fingers in dust. Okay, so we've gotten that. There are cables coming out of the hole on the top. Looks like a light used to be here, but it was taken down for whatever reason. I heard spiders, and I do not like spiders one bit. Hmm. I peer into the keyhole. Oh, that's the elevator fire switch. If you stick the key in it and turn it, it activates the elevator in an emergency. Emergencies? What kind? Uh, I don't really recall. Well, I think they can make the elevator move without closing the doors. According to Damon, normal elevators stop moving if their doors are broken. But suppose you needed it to use it during an emergency. You'd need the key. Seems like a good time. This seems like a good time to use that. We did force the doors open, after all. If we broke them while doing that, we might need to use the fire switch. Still, you're pretty well informed. I learned that during a disaster drill when I worked at a larger hospital. We were lectured to prepare us for anything that might happen. So that's why he knows so much. It's actually pretty smart. Do you have a key you think we could use? You should try it. Don't know if we actually have a key. Let me see. Oh. I take out the emergency key ring out of my bag and check the keys on it. I find a small key that has the word fire engraved on it. I stick it into the fire switch. Slowly turn it on the on position. But I can't turn it. It doesn't seem lubricated enough. I try to force it, but it might break. Well, I think that's the right key, but you might need to put some oil on it. Let's see, do I have any oil? Man, break the seal. Hmm. I don't think we have any. So it doesn't look like we have any for that. See, elevator panel buttons. It has buttons to the first and the fifth floor to the fifth floor. Going by how it looks from the outside, it doesn't seem to be broken. Hmm. Wait, is it just me or is something off? It is indeed odd. The buttons only go up to the fifth floor. And yet... The floor guide says there's a sixth floor. That is quite concerning. Maybe you can only go to the sixth floor by using the stairs? I don't think so. It says the sixth floor has a deluxe suite. I've never heard of a VIP room that you can only get to using the stairs. That's a good point. Why would they take their guest of honor to use the stairs? But then, what does this discrepancy mean? I suddenly remembered how Banshee was fixated on the elevator. Like how he knew it held a secret all along. In the end, we'll just have to try to get it moving. Huh? Get what moving? This elevator, like what Banshee was saying. Damon stares at me, his face a mask of utter disbelief. You, you know Banshee has mysterious powers. Maybe we just need to bet on them? Though his idea has a huge hole in it. The problem is how we get about getting it to move. I don't have the slightest idea. Hmm, I see now. I thought he was going to to ir I thought he was going to get irritated with me, but Damon thinks about something for a while. Then he slowly starts talking. And on, to be honest, I've been giving it a lot of thought since then. A lot of thought to what? Why we survived? Or more, why the spirits were vanquished. I've been considering the reason. 
It's surprising to hear him talk about it. He speaks as if recounting something painful. The reason why? It's clear that nothing physical was behind it. I get the feeling they were vanquished for more meaningful reasons. Otherwise, that soldier wouldn't have just have crumbled just from one hit with a chisel. Which leads me to one answer. The fights we experienced with the spirits weren't actual fights. More rituals with certain conventions. Rituals? Yes, just like religious ceremonies, rituals that are represented to the spirits. A ritual is a reenactment of something. Obviously, it didn't actually take place. But maybe going through the motions satisfies those on the other side. Then one purpose is compl uh, Then one's purpose is accomplished. In our case, the spirits were vanquished. Then the marks disappeared. It's all conceptual, but it's a convincing argument, especially for those with personal experience. For example, we vanquished Hanahiko with lipstick and a hand mirror, but we were essentially reenacting his memories of his mother. And if you define a ritual as a reenactment, then that'd mean our fights were rituals. I understand that, but... What about the elevator? We must fix the elevator, that much is clear. But perhaps we only need a ritual, in other words, go through the motions. So he's saying we need to perform some kind of ritual to get the elevator moving? It's almost like playing house. This isn't playtime, rituals are serious. No adult would get excited over a groundbreaking ceremony. Ah, uh, true. If this is the work of a being caught up in some delusion like the spirits, a ritual might make something happen. The investigation was entrusted to you, therefore I leave the decisions to you. Repairing ritual. Well, it does make sense once you think about it. So now, we've completely finished this floor. We'll be moving to the third floor in the next episode. Thank you guys for joining me for some of this DLC. And let me know what horror games you want to see next. Bye, everybody.